Hi everyone, welcome back to the Reclaimed Ranch. My name is Tara and I have a few more thrift flips for you today. Um, I went into my inventory and found this old uh, lampshade and a leg from a couch and then a wooden round from some different thrift stores. So we're going to put these pieces together. We're going to make a riser and then I'm going to disassemble the lampshade and make a cloche. So I'm going to start out by removing that screw. I just used some pliers and they pull out pretty easy. And then I'm going to use Fusion's Chessler for the color. I'm going to go ahead and just paint that foot part and the round, the wood round in this Chessler color. And then my plan for the lampshade is to remove all the fabric, clean it up and then paint it gold and, um, have kind of a more elegant cloche setup. So I use my heat gun in between each coat. I paint painted two coats on both pieces. And I don't know about you, but I'm still hoping for that spring. We're having negative temperatures this week and it just makes it hard. But these projects give me some light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. So I'm going to use the tight bond wood glue to glue these two pieces together. I'm going to put it in the center, finish painting around it, and then I'm going to leave it on the floor overnight to dry, but I'm going to put a heavy piece on top just to keep it close together. So here I am. I've never done this before. Um, it actually wasn't too hard to disassemble, just tear off all the trim and then take off all of the fabric and then clean up all the glue. Now that center piece, that gold piece that connected to the lamp, um, I'm actually going to cut that out. And there's a piece here you can see that was broken. So I used to be an orthodontic technician and I would make some orthodontic appliances. So I'm very used to using a soldering gun and the flux and all that. So if you're not comfortable, I wouldn't suggest doing it. Maybe just some super glue. Um, and I'm also going to use my Dremel to cut the metal out. Uh, this again is not for someone who is not comfortable using this because the Dremel can kick back quite a bit, but um, it's easy for me to use because I used it all the time making those appliances. So I'm gonna just Cut that out and polish up those edges so that they're not sharp. And then clean it up. And then I'm going to use Rust-Oleum's two times um, metallic gold color. I'm going to spray paint that for two coats and let that dry. This next piece here I got at um, a thrift store for $4.99. And I really, really like the green that was on there. I just am not a fan of the dated inside. So I'm going to use Fusion's Cashmere and I'm going to use two coats on there. And my camera apparently did not, or my phone died while I was recording. So the next step I did was I used a transfer from IOD, the Brocrant transfer, and it's a couple of chickens and some words. And if you're not familiar with the transfer process, I do have a lot of other videos that show you that technique. Um, basically, you just lay the transfer down on your project. You use the little tool to push down on it and um, it will transfer then to your project from the vellum page. So this next one is a little bucket that I got at a thrift store and uh, wasn't a fan of the apples. I know somebody did paint that by hand, but wanted to bring it a little bit more up to date and I'm not a huge fan of the yellowing color, but um, I think it still works okay with this green color. So I just left it and I'm gonna do two coats of the aviary and dry with my heat gun in between. And then I'm gonna go in with another IOD transfer and it's gonna be of some chickens and it's gonna be a white transfer. You, I love the DIY paint because you can automatically tell when it's dry. <laughs> it changes to a lighter color. So before you want to do the transfer, I always seal it 
uh, really well. So I'm going to use DIY's liquid, liquid patina to seal it. And then once it's dry, I'm going to go ahead and, and go in with the transfer. So this is the traditional pots transfer. And this is a good one to use if you aren't used to using transfers. It's got a lot of little ones that you can practice on. There's a lot of them in black and in blue and white. So you have a lot of different options there. So I chose this little chicken one because I'm trying to get back into the farmhouse feel a little bit. And like I said, you're just going to place that down, use the little tool that comes with it, you rub it, and then slightly lift on one end and kind of keep going and rubbing as you go. Lift and rub and lift and rub. And you can always push it back if it sticks to the vellum paper and then rub again and then it'll come back off. So then again, you want to seal after you've placed your transfer down. And on the next one here is the cheese box I got for $5 at a thrift store. And I've seen a lot of really cool projects done with decoupage and this decoupage paper is just gorgeous. It's a recycled decoupage paper. I'm not sure of the name of it. Um, this French millinery DIY is a pretty purple, but I wanted a little bit lighter. So I added some of the petticoat pink DIY paint in with the French millinery to make it more of a light, lighter purple. And so um, that's the cool thing about paint is you can make any color you want. So then I'm going to paint the bottom portion, um, this purple. And again, I do two coats, let it dry really well. And then the top, I'm going to paint white because you want those beautiful flowers and colors to pop. So you want a really light background. So I'm gonna go in with my Fusions Victorian Lace. Um, it's a one-step paint, so that way I won't have to worry about waiting to seal it and letting it dry in between. I can just put the paint on, couple coats, dry it, and then it's ready to go. So I really wanted those little purple flowers up top. I'm going to just cut it down. And then I'm going to go in with my liquid patina to decoupage this onto the box lid. I'm going to do it in little strips. And that way it'll have less chance of the wrinkles showing up. So we're going to just do a starter section here. Place it down and then I use clean wrap to help get those wrinkles out. And then do a little section again, keep going, push towards outside from the middle, and then finish up on the bottom. And then another trick is once you get all of your decoupage paper down, I took a heat gun to mine. I got all the wrinkles I could with the cling rack, but once I put the heat gun on it, it bubbles it back up and then lays it down perfectly flat. So it's, it's, hardly any wrinkles at all. And then I put a coat of the liquid patina on top, let it dry really well. And then I'm gonna go in with my little finger sander with an anti grit sandpaper and remove that excess. You always wanna go in a downward motion and that's gonna just pull it right off and get a nice clean edge. And then once I get all that off, I'm going to go ahead and just use the excess paint, purple paint that I have, to paint the lid there on the sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and go in with my liquid patina and seal all that purple paint because it is the DIY clay base paint.
So here are the four projects for today. I hope you all enjoyed watching. I hope you've had a great week and I hope you have warmer temperatures than we do. <laughs> it's supposed to be like this for the next few days. So we're just going to hunker down and stay inside. But um, let me know what you guys think, what your favorite project is. And I will see you again on Tuesday. I'm going to go downstairs in my stash again. We're just going to keep doing these videos until I get most of my stash done. And then I have restricted thrifting for myself until I get my stash somewhat organized. So we're going to start pumping these out so I can go thrifting again. Anyway, have a good weekend, guys, and I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.